Hey, what's up, guys? In this video, we're going to be going over the top five signs champions in MCOC. Um, I'm going to be honest, this is probably uh, my least, eh, I don't know if it's my least favorite class to go over, but it's definitely not the least strong class, but I don't really like talking about the top five because it's kind of lame, honestly. I'm going to be honest, the list hasn't really changed in the past, like, year. Um... The top five is kind of the same, just kind of moved around the rankings of them. So, that's kind of boring. Um, like, for example, Skill. We got the introduction of Hitmonkey and Elsa, which pushed Blade out. Mutant. You know, we got Colossus and Magneto, uh, who were buffed. So, that just pushed a lot of characters out. And, yeah, cause, Skill. I mean, Science hasn't really seen, like, any crazy class changes in a while so it's kind of just been the same characters so with that introduction out of the way also this is just my opinion so if you have a different one you can just write down in the comments very nicely why you disagree and who you'd put instead and i'll respect your opinion but don't get mad it's not that deep it's just a fucking mobile video game um so yeah starting off our list we're just gonna give just two honorable mentions real quick or actually three one red hulk uh pretty good character um Pretty good for like man things and shit like that. His damage output's really good. Incinerate, poison immune. Uh, where is she at? She Hulk. She's not in the top five. Sorry. Um, if you're a diehard She Hulk fan, which I know there's a lot of, um, but I just not for me. Um, and then where is my man? Uh, where is he? Red Guardian. He's also he could be top five, but I don't really know how much he works. And I think the other characters are still better than him. So I think he's definitely a close sixth or something. I don't know. But he's not in the top five either. Starting off at number five. As much as I really don't like this character, his play style, or pretty much anything about him, I can't deny. Thing is, I think, the fifth best signs. He needs to be SIG 200, though. Pretty much the main reason that people in the endgame rank him up is for SIG 200. His protection, and when you're at 20 rock stacks, 15 rock stacks, and you're also SIG 200 with this guy and you activate protection, you basically just don't take damage. Like, it's kind of like, it's actually, like, hard to die, like, in endgame content, because their attack's so high that they trigger protection on every hit. So it's actually pretty hard to die. But that's his main utility. Um, he can't be nullified, um, which is nice for, like, buffet. Um, he's bleed and shock immune. And I think armor break immune also. He's immune to bleed, shock, armor break, armor shatter, nullify, stagger, fate seal. So, he's a pretty cool character. He's really good in defense. His prestige is, I think, really good, too. Um, and his damage is absolutely fucking insane if you have the full thing synergy with the champion and shit like that. But the problem is, in the end game, like, Act 6-7, you don't really want to build a full team around just one character because you need a lot of different pieces of utility. But for, like, Variant 1, he's actually pretty good for. So, I'll, I gotta give him that. But the problem is, his damage without the synergy is just, eh. It's not that good. It's decent, but it's not, like, crazy or strong. Um, but he's a really good character, Sig 200. I have him at Sig 20. I used him just for one path on the um, can't stop, won't stop in Act 6, because I didn't have any other option. Nowadays, you can use Magneto, and he's a lot better for it, but whatever. Um, he's still good. He still has utility. He still has access to um, Unstoppable pretty easily, so that's really good for Can't Stop, Won't Stop shit. And yeah, he's a pretty decent character, but I just really don't like him. Number four, another character I really just don't like playing, but I cannot devalue their utility. Um, number four goes to Void. Um, this guy is utility fucking powerhouse. Um, any like stupidly OP heal fights that you just want to just cheese... Um, this guy is probably the best option, honestly. I found love and appreciation for Void when I was doing the Abyss, because I don't have Human Torch. But Void worked really well as a counter. So what makes this guy good is, well, one, he's incinerate immune, but what makes him really good is he has three debuffs. And, um, with those three debuffs, where are they? I got these three. Fatigue, Petrify, Agility. Um, the Fatigue is kind of useless. Um, the agility debuff is decent. It reduces the ability accuracy of evade and dexterity by 30%. And 
percent for each stack, and then for and then the best one is Petrify, obviously, which is reduces their regeneration and power gain by fifty percent. And the way this guy works is you get a debuff every I think ten seconds. Wait, how when do you get it? Every ten seconds, you, he puts a random debuff on them, and every time you throw a special one, it puts another random debuff on him. Void needs to be awakened to get Fear of the Void, which is when you get six debuff, all six, you get two of each. It, it changes them into a Fear of the Void, which lasts for, I think, a long time, for 40 seconds. And um, then you can get another six debuffs to make it even more, like, reversed. So say you have two Petrifies, it cancels out regeneration power gain by 50% each, so it's 100%, so it fully cancels out power gain and regeneration. But when you get Fear of the Void active and you get another two Petrifies, it reverses their heal and power gain by 100%. So you go into the Abyss and there's like these crazy health pool opponents that have these crazy regen bonuses like Old Man Logan, for example. You get your Petrifies up and he's just regenerating backwards, just degenerating so fast. And um, also it's very nice to... Um, for the agility one, um, they can't evade at all, which is pretty nice, and I actually didn't even know. I never really thought about it, because most people don't use him for evade fights. But he's just OP for like crazy cheesing health pool, like regen fights. Um, so yeah, avoid that's pretty much all he's used for. But it's very useful, because a lot of his damage, when he, also when he puts a debuff on them, um, for every debuff he has, let me just see if I can find it. You take 218 direct damage per second. So the more debuffs you have, the more damage per second is just doing. So you can do a lot of damage with this guy without even touching the opponent, which is very helpful utility as we know, with like a Mega Red Quake, all that shit. Not being able to touch the opponent is very helpful. But this guy does need to be awakened, at least Sig 1, but he's a lot better when he's at Sig 200, a lot better. Because it makes him, when he's in Fear of the Void, it makes his attack a lot higher for Sig 200. And it makes his buffs come a lot faster in Fear of the Void if he's SIG 200. So a SIG 200 Void is definitely a lot different character than a SIG 1 Void. But just to get that main utility you need, like the Fear of the Void, he only needs to be SIG 1. But he does need to be Awakened. So he's at number 4. Now, top 3, we got Captain America Infinity War. He was number 1 for a while for me until I realized the truth. But um, this guy is a fucking beast. Um, there's a lot to say about this guy. Like, for me, I would rank three of them as a six-star, even unawakened. Probably not the smartest move, but just his perfect block and damage alone are really good. This guy will perfect block, get zero damage on every parry, which is extremely helpful for crazy attack pools like Variant and Act 6 and 7. But actually, in Act 6, they were toned down. But perfect blocks, and then what you want to do with this guy is just parry heavy, basically. And whenever you parry, you get a kinetic potential. You can build up to five of these. And it'll make you, your attacks just hit a lot harder. And if you have a kinetic potential and you hold, charge heavy, you get a fury. And the fury makes your heavy hit really hard. So it hits like a fucking truck. And then when you get to your special two, you just special two. And if it crits and you got your full kinetic potential up and your fury, it'll crit for like 100k, which is a lot of damage. It's good for finishing big chunky fights. Getting a nice 100k chunk in there is very helpful, as you know. And just that alone makes him, I think, god tier. But what makes him beyond god tier is this dude's awakened ability. Um, if you want super reliable awakened ability, he does need to be sig 200. Um, that's only for really skill. Um, or if you have a skill character on the team, if you get a debuff, it'll consume one kinetic charge and purify it. But other than that, you don't really need him to be sig 200. Like, at yeah, SIG 140, it's like, what, like an 80% chance, 70% chance for everything else. And you don't really need them 100% chance, unless it's the skill one, obviously. But for every class on the team, he has a certain thing. Um, mutant, it's kind of useless. Skill is whenever a debuff's gained, obviously you ch consume one to, it's 100% chance at SIG 200 to purify it. Science, 100% um, chance in a well-timed block to place a weakness debuff. Mystic. 100% um, chance to gain one kinetic potential each time a buff expires or is nullified on the opponent, which is decent but not really needed. And then Cosmic and Tech, which are like the big boys. Tech is really the big boy, honestly. Um, Cosmic's 100% chance of all time to block to place an armor break, which is really good for fighting characters like Killmonger and shit like that. 
Warlock. Tech is like the super good one though. It's like 100% chance on a well time to block to place a 25% Petrify on the opponent. So what you do with this guy if you want to cancel regen, you know, obviously the Despair Mastery is for every debuff. Um, cancels regeneration by 15%. So with this guy, if you want to build like a regeneration reversal team, you want a Science, Cosmic, and Tech. So for the Science, you're placing Weakness, Cosmic, you're placing Armor Breaks, and Tech, you're placing Petrifies. And at stick 200, every time you parry, you're putting three debuffs, which is 45% um, reversal healing from Despair, plus the 25% chance from um, the Petrify debuff, which is 70% chance. So once you parry two to three times and you get like six to nine debuffs and a few of those are Petrifies, you start reversing their heal. So if a crazy heal fights, um, I think on my channel you can switch it up for aggression regeneration. Has an American Infinity War on aggression regeneration nodes. He literally can just parry and never hit the opponent, and they'll just slowly just re like regenerate down and just kill themselves. So he's like Void in the sense where he's crazy for reversing heal. Now that I think about it, almost all of the science characters at the top level are good for reversing heal, except for the number one character. And if you've played this game for a little bit, you probably know the number one character is, and it's not really much of a surprise. But. With all this utility, being able to shrug off any debuff in the game, being able to reverse healing, having perfect block, crazy damage, he's an overall just god. Also, uh, Sig 20, 6 star rank 3. So as a rank 3, 6 star, Sig 20, he is the highest prestige in the game for any character at Sig 20. Uh, Sig 20, Captain America Infinity War, rank 3, is higher prestige than a Sig 20, Silver Surfer, rank 3. Don't know why, but that's just how it is. I think it's like 12,000, like 100 or something. So he's really good prestige um, for like free to play players. So he's number three. Number two, a character who did not get respect for the longest time. And a character that I don't have, which I'm very sad about. Uh, Human Torch. This guy got his debut in respect when the Abyss came out. The second the Abyss came out, people realized that this guy was just beyond god tier. And I can't blame them. I slept on him too. I didn't really see what the hype was until I saw Abyss. Um, this die just bullies, like just really, that's the best way to put it. He just straight up bullies any fight with energy damage, mystic characters, anything that like that can give him smolder. He just really bullies. The way he works is um, basically, well, it's a mutant incinerate, cold snap, and frost fight, which is very helpful. And if you forget what he's immune to, just remember he's immune to anything when it comes to temperature on either spectrum. Super cold or super hot. Cinerite, cold snap, frostbite. And basically, um, whenever he'd be incinerated or an energy attack, like, uh, like say, like for example, like Iron Man's like medium, I think, is energy. Or like Iron Man special one. Or any mystic character in the game touches him, he gets a smolder. And every time he has a smolder... It makes his incinerates last a tiny bit longer and do a little bit more damage. So this guy, his damage is very exponential, basically. That's why he's insane for the Abyss. Um, and the damage is just so high. Like any Mystic fight, every time you parry, they'll be giving you another Smolder. And every time you get into the Smolder, it'll make your temperature go up. You start at 10 temperature, and you can hold down heavy um, to build temperature or just get like hit by... Or any, like, take block hits and shit by, like, energy attacks or mystic characters. And when you're at 20 in temperature, your, um, what's it called, your incinerates will last longer. Another thing really good about this guy is, where is it? I think it's, where is it? Where is it? Incinerates. Yeah, for each incinerate on the opponent, their regeneration rate is reduced by 60%. But once again, as we know, with the Despair Mastery, each debuff is 15%. So if you have three debuffs on the opponent, it's 45% less healing from Despair, and then 20% for each incinerate is another 60%. So it's three incinerates on the opponent, you already cancel the regen, and you can reverse it very easily, because you can get you can get lots of incinerates with this guy. So this guy reverses regen like crazy, and you get a you put an incinerate on them with the fur with your both medium hits, um, both heavy hits. And your first light attack. So like a Corvus combo, medium, light, medium. He gets three incinerates. And you can just do this over and over again. And the damage just scales higher and higher the more smolders he gets. And it's unreal. It's unreal. 
Uh, for characters like Mephisto, he has his pre-fight, which he has one per quest he can activate. And with his Awakened ability, he can get more than one quest. But most quests only really need it one or two times for like the boss or whatever. And basically what this does is makes him start the fight in Nova Flame mode. In Nova Flame mode, it incinerates our passives and nothing in the game is immune to it. Not anything in the game. So you can reverse healing and shit like that. So when you reverse like a Mephisto, I, if you haven't seen this interaction, I desperately advise you to search up Human Torch versus Abyss Mephisto. With the aura of incineration, every like millisecond, he gets one smolder. So you stand next to him. You can get so much smolder in that fight so quickly. And your damage is just exponentially spiking. If there was like a 30 million health Mephisto in the game, Human Torch could probably solo it in like 5 minutes, honestly. It just it's, it's so unreal how fast this damage scales in that fight. Because he can scale infinite smolders. Um, and most fights will die before you get to like 10, 15 smolders. But that's not the point. Like in Abyss, he just destroys fights. That's what made him so good for the Abyss. The fights are so big. And... You know, having a character that can do so much damage in such a little bit of time, since you also have, since you also have limited amounts of hits you can do before you just die, made him insane. He can one shot plenty of fights. The way he can reverse healing just can one shot plenty of fights or cheese. Um, he's just so good. He's just so good. Also, I think when he's above ten temperature, where is it? At ten temperature, his attacks are so intense they cannot miss. So he can't be missed. So that's also another thing. So that's just something cool to keep in mind. Human Torch, second best science in the game easily. I really wish I had him. And then the first character, which we all know is coming. And I'm not going to spend too much time explaining just because it's just so obvious. It's just Quake. Quake is just so good. She's arguably the best character in the entire game. The only pr character that really even rivals her is Qu Ghost. But even then, I think, still think Quake might be better. For just because she has the ability to never touch the opponent. With her heavy. With Quake, if you don't know, you just basically hold heavy in a corner and you just dodge. That's all you do. And you just do damage. And her damage is all like, um... It's all just from her Aftershock. Which also inflicts concussion, reducing ability accuracy by 100%. So it gets around certain things like... Say there's another that's like, you 90% less damage unless you have a, you know, bleed on the opponent or something like that. It ignores that. It ignores everything. Her damage gets around so many just weird things. It cancels so many weird nodes. She just turns off nodes. It's so weird and like just... I can't explain it unless you see gameplay of her. Or you play in the end game. But just her ability to never have to touch the opponent. So she's fully immune to what? Like... Uh, what's his name? Um, like Electro. Pretty much any... Like Magic, Dormammu. Because you never have to... Like for Dormammu, you never have to... Uh, activate a buff because you're never attacking the opponent and you're just dexing in the corner so your dex buff is there but it never gets nullified because you're never attacking them you're just holding heavy quake good quick players end the fight like most of the time with just zero hits in the opponent just holding heavy magic she never gains power because you're never hitting her she just gets around everything in the game and she just counters so many just she just turns off so many bullshit nodes just like with her concussion ability that's just so weird but, like, there's a reason they didn't release her as a 6-star, and I doubt they ever will. Which does mean Quake might be out of the, out of the meadow when we have rank 5 6-stars at that point. But until then, she's definitely the best character in the game. Probably. She's either 1 or 2. Her and Ghost, just those two. Um, she's just so good. So, she yeah, she's definitely the best science in the game. Nonetheless, maybe even just the best character overall. So, yeah, um... Quake, she also doesn't need to be awakened at all. So, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, and subscribe. Um, tell me what you guys think your list would be in the comments. And don't come from my throat if my list is different than yours. Or do. I don't really care that much. But, yeah, you're kind of just wasting your time if you do. So, yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Give a like, comment, and subscribe. And, yeah, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.